Hi, I'm Steve McConaughey. I'm the Educational Consultant here at ADM. In today's webinar, I would like to explain in detail the procedure for making minimal invasive bridge frameworks using Dentapreg PFU. This kind of bridge can be used in a variety of clinical applications, such as minimally invasive composite bridge in posterior regions where enhanced strength is required, also long-term provisional solution to delay the final treatment, and non-invasive bonded bridge for semi-permanent solutions. During our webinar, we will learn about making indirect posterior bridges, when fiber reinforced composites are the correct choice, and a step-by-step -step guide to applying the Dentapreg strip from beginning to end. The entire webinar will take about 15 minutes. If you have any further questions that won't be answered during this webinar, have a look at our website, dentapreg.com, or contact us at support at dentapreg.com. For the design of the bridge framework, it's important to take into account how bridge framework works. In physics, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. This principle holds true in occlusion. The masticatory forces create tension stress. That is why the tensile, or pulling forces, need to be transferred from the bridge framework to the abutment teeth. This stress is able to be handled by metal, but it's not aesthetic. Moreover, the better bonded dentapreg has equal or greater tensile strength as metal while holding true to the standard of non or minimal invasive dentistry because smaller slots are needed. You've probably faced some problems while making posterior bridges. Two of the major problems with traditional bridges are that when bonded to a metal frame, the device is not very pretty and a beautiful smile is the ultimate goal for every patient. On the other hand, when only using composite, the weak adhesion to the abutment teeth is 30% less than when compared to a metal framework. Fibers offer the same strength as metal with the added aesthetics. And not only that, but Dentapreg is also repairable during its service lifetime. Dentapreg is therefore the main choice for dental professionals who demand reliability, strength, and aesthetics all together in one package. A bridge made from Dentapreg PFU combines all of the desirable properties. They are clinically reliable thanks to the perfect combination of incredibly strong glass fibers and a unique resin. Technology derived from the production of composite materials for the aerospace industry is used in the manufacture of the strips. This fiber backbone gives Dentapreg strips their unique strength and stability in the moist oral environment. Dentapreg has the highest strength in its class. This allows the resulting bridge framework to be very subtle by not requiring the extra flowable composite. The final aesthetics of the bridge are achieved from the composite used on the coating layer of the bridge. Through extensive research and development, we have found the resin which is the most ideal partner to the fibers. The resin, which is pre-impregnated with the glass fibers, due to its chemical composition, is compatible with all light curing adhesive systems and composites. When working with Dentapreg, it is therefore possible to use whichever light curing composite you prefer. The pre-impregnation process creates a slightly tacky feel to the strip. Also, they have low shape memory, which aids handling and adhesion to the teeth. This allows the application to be simple, fast, and safe. Also, by pre-impregnating the strip, the resin is combined on a molecular level and eliminates many of the steps normally associated with fiber bridges. This is one of the main reasons Dentapreg has gained such popularity among dentists. These specific attributes of Dentapreg are the reasons for the extraordinarily high ratings by independent experts. We can point to the example of a recent evaluation by CRA, which states that 100% of dentists would recommend this product to a friend. The direct procedure means chair side in the mouth. While this option may be faster, we would recommend first gaining some experience with Dentapreg bridge frameworks. Today we'll focus on the indirect procedure. The indirect method is done in the lab. This method is more precise and aesthetic. Plus, it is much better to do the indirect procedure until a certain amount of experience using Dentapreg has been obtained. To apply the bridge, it's important to place the strip in the desired position on the teeth. The shape of the light-cured strip is very important. 
because it's necessary to respect the physiological forces that occur during mastication. Also, any previous preparations may be used for mechanical retention. We will discuss in more detail the various possibilities for slots and arch shapes later in the webinar. Before going through the step-by-step -step procedure of making posterior bridges, let's watch a short instruction video about making posterior bridges. Now we'll explain step by step the complete procedure for making an indirect posterior bridge using Dentapreg PFU. Clean and prepare the abutment teeth. This includes creating any slots that can be used for mechanical retention. We will speak more about preparing the slots on the abutment teeth later in this webinar. After preparing the abutment teeth with whatever necessary slots for mechanical retention, take an alginate impression of the clinical situation. Once the impression is taken, it should be sent to the lab for bridge work. It is possible to do a direct chair-side procedure by skipping to step five. Once in the lab, pour a model using a high-quality dental stone or you can use silicone. The bridge will be prepared on this model. Working on a model is easier than the direct chair-side method and the final result will be more precise and aesthetic. Measure the length of a Dentapreg PFU strip. You can measure the length of the strip using dental wax, dental floss, wedgets, or other appropriate tools. Remove the strip from the blister and cut it with regular scissors to the required length. Remove the protective foil and paper. A quick tip, the easiest way to remove the foil and paper is to snip a little somewhere in the middle of the length of the strip, obviously avoiding cutting the strip. Then peel away the foil and paper Removing the remaining protective paper and foil becomes very easy. Do not touch the unprotected strip with bare hands. The use of powder-free latex gloves is recommended. Return the remaining part of the strip to the blister and place the blister in the supplied light-safe box. Store in a dark place, preferentially in a refrigerator. You can store the open blister for up to two weeks without deteriorating the properties of the strip significantly. Insert and form the strip to the required position. The ideal shape of the bridge is as close as possible to the part of the structure which will experience the most tensile stress. In other words, the bridge should arch down towards the bottom of the new pontic while leaving space in order to facilitate cleaning of the gingiva. We will discuss in more detail the possible orientation of arch shapes later in the webinar. Light cure the entire strip for 40 seconds and remove it from the model. Apply a thin layer of flowable composite along the bridgework area, including the slots on the abutment teeth, providing enough composite that the strip will be covered on all sides. Thanks to the chemical compatibility of Dentapreg, you can use whichever light curing flowable composite you prefer. Step 10. Place the cured strip into the flowable composite. Again, make sure the flowable composite covers the entire strip on all sides. It is important to cover the strip on all sides in order to ensure the protection of the fibers and immensely increase the overall durability of the bridge framework. Light cure the strip with the flowable composite. You can use any light curing flowable composite that you prefer. Just follow the manufacturer's instructions. Build the pontic with crown and bridge composite, then polish it. It is also possible to use the original tooth as a pontic. We will describe how to do that in a few moments. This is the end of the lab work, and the prepared pontic is now ready to be applied directly in the patient. Sandblast the bonding areas of the bridge work. 
This is in order to create a slightly rough surface which will aid in adhesion. Clean the sandblasted bonding areas with an etching gel before the cementation. Put a layer of composite cement on the bonding area of the bridge framework according to the manufacturer's instructions. Cement the bridge framework. Remove the excess cement. This can be done with a scaler or any appropriate instrument. Finish the bridge and adjust the occlusion. We would like to emphasize the proper placement of the strip in the bridge framework. As we can see from this cutaway, the shape of the strip arches down towards the gingiva, which provides the best shape able to deal with the tensile forces. As you may have noticed, here we've used an inlay, which is the most commonly used type of slot, because it leaves most of the sound tooth while at the same time providing extra support. However, there are more options for creating slots for mechanical retention, which may be the correct choice in specific clinical applications. And I'd like to talk to you about these other options now. The longer the span of the bridge, the more retention area is required on the abutment teeth. The following are possible slots starting from the most invasive to non-invasive. A crown is done when there is a multiple unit bridge and a crown has already been prepared. The figures shown are the minimum which is required to create the bridge framework. This option is the most invasive but also provides the highest strength which is necessary for multiple unit bridges. When the preparation for an onlay has already been done or a filling can be removed, the onlay slot provides more retention. However, it is also more invasive. I would like to point out that even though the strip is three millimeters wide and the slot is only two millimeters, it is not a problem because three millimeters can be squished in order to fit into the groove. When a filling can be extended to include the added retention area, then inlay is the best option. This slot provides a satisfactory amount of retention and is also minimally invasive. As I said before, this is probably the most common preparation due to the compromise of retention and minimal invasivity. Box, the most minimally invasive used when minimal or no work has been previously done on the abutment teeth. Maryland. If the abutment teeth are intact and healthy, there is a non-invasive solution that can and actually must be done chairside. Simply bond the strips on both the lingual and labial sides of both abutment teeth, as shown in this illustration. While the downward arch that we have shown you is the most common shape of the bridge framework, as you can see, there are many bridge framework shapes that can be used in the lab, and each of them have advantages depending on specific circumstances. Please refer to our website, dentapreg.com, for more detailed information. How to remove the bridge. So let's talk about removing the bridge after it has served its desired aims. There are four steps to removing a bridge. First, cut the retentions using a diamond burr, then remove the pontic. Next, remove the rest of the composite from the abutment teeth, and finally polish the abutment teeth. Dentapreg PFU. The Dentapreg system provides several types of strips which are optimized for specific clinical applications. For posterior bridges, Dentapreg PFU is an ideal product. It is available in two different packages. The basic package contains eight strips, each five centimeters long, their width is three millimeters, and the thickness is just 0.3 millimeter. This subtle shape accommodates about 8,300 individual fibers. The fibers are unidirectional. In addition to the strips, you will also receive relevant literature and a light safe box for keeping the strip in an open blister for future use. The smaller package, a mini refill, contains three strips with the same dimensions plus literature. For pricing and orders, visit our online shop at dentapreg.com, which is open for customers from the USA. For US orders, you can also call 
5266. For those countries where we don't have distributors, you may contact us on our email, sales at dentapreg.com. Again, you'll find all this information on dentapreg.com. Dentapreg Instruments While one of the special aspects of Dentapreg is that no special tools are required, we have developed two tools that make the job even easier. Dentapreg Shield is an ideal tool for protection of the Dentapreg strip against light during light curing. Dentapreg Fork is an ideal tool for adaptation of the Dentapreg strip to the required position. How to store. An unopened package may be stored for up to three years. It is also possible to store opened blisters in the provided light safe box for up to two weeks without deteriorating the properties of the strip. We would recommend storing open blisters in a dark, cool place, preferentially in a refrigerator. This minimizes the risk of monomer evaporation and allows you to use the rest of unused strips for other applications. Now let's see some clinical cases from dental practice. Indirect onlay inlay bridge slide. One abutment tooth was already compromised and prepared with an onlay and the other with an inlay. This is an interesting case showing the versatility of this material. It shows that you have the freedom to really adapt the strip to the specific clinical application. We would like to thank Dr. Volum for these pictures. Direct inlay inlay. This is showing the procedure done directly chair side. The procedure is similar to the indirect one we've explained except, of course, without the need to make a model of the patient's teeth. And we would like to thank Dr. Greger for these pictures. The Maryland Bridge. The initial situation was a young patient with impacted healthy abutment teeth. Therefore, the doctor chose to do a non-invasive Maryland Bridge. This procedure should always be done direct chair side because if the bridge framework is already cured, it would be impossible to place it on the teeth due to their conical shape. If you chose to perform a Maryland bridge, then please refer to the instructions on making anterior bonded bridges as the procedure is the same except for the use of two strips, one on the lingual and one on the labial side as shown in the illustration. We would like to thank Dr. Volum for these pictures. So I'd like to tell you a little story about a mother who was on maternity leave. She was missing a tooth in the posterior area and the dentist recommended a ceramic bridge. However, as the mother was on maternity leave, they discussed a temporary solution until she could save the money for the ceramics. Uh, the dentist suggested using Dentapreg due to its lower cost and because of its minimum invasivity. That was five years ago and the bridge is still in use without any problems. It is common for Dentapreg fiber reinforced bridges to last 10 or 12 years, which is why we refer to them as long term provisionals. Again, you can visit dentapreg.com for answers to any questions you may have that have not been answered in this webinar.